meal that might be good for you to make for your mom this weekend because it's Mother's Day weekend. I've got some carrots that I took and just ran my knife through. You know those store-bought uh, shredded carrots you can get already in a sack? You need about a cup of them. Just run your knife through them, drop them in the same skillet that you browned up some chicken in. Again, I'm cooking for up to six people here. I had about two pounds, two and a half pounds of white meat chicken, or you can mix it up, boneless, skinless, white, and dark, whatever your mom and the rest of the family likes. A little salt and pepper, brown it, out of the pan. Back down into the same hot pot. We put some carrots. Once the carrots get tender, a couple minutes later, throw in some green onions, some scallions. Whites and greens, small bunch. And then a couple of handfuls of peas. And I scoot the veggies right off to the side. And in the other corner of the pan, we're gonna make a little roux so we can turn this pan into vegetables in gravy. Then we'll mix everybody all together and put some mashed potatoes up on top. It's gonna be delicious. kind of a lighter version of shepherd's pie and that's a true crowd pleaser so everybody will love this one and mom will love you for it I was saying before it's 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 kind of a frustration of mine I can never cook for my mom for Mother's Day and have it mean anything because we cook for each other all the time so I gotta push my brain to new limits I got a good one for this year though mom I'm not telling you you have to wait till Sunday into our roux, into our gravy that we're gonna make in this corner of the pan, we're gonna add a couple secret ingredients. A little bit of Dijon mustard, and my mom loves tarragon, so I'm gonna put some fresh tarragon in the sauce as well. Mmm, tarragon smells so fabulous. If you like basil, you should cook more with fresh tarragon. They're very close in flavor, very sweet, almost faintly licorice-y, really lovely. You just need a palm full of that. Our butter has melted, so now I'm gonna add to about two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna sprinkle in a little flour, about the same amount of flour. I grab a whisk. And rather than dirty a whole other pot, I just scoot the veggies over and make it in one corner of the pan. Whisk that together for about a minute. And then you can either use two cups of chicken stock, or if you want a little tang and depth of flavor, you can whisk in a little bit of wine. We always have some Pinot Grigio around for my mom. She loves that, Santa Margarita Pinot. So I'm gonna whisk in half a cup of wine. Just eyeball it, let that cook out a bit. And then where's my chicken stock? Good old stock in a box. About a cup and a half, you just eyeball it, a little less than half of a box of stock. And that'll thicken up almost immediately for you. Then to that, we're gonna stir in a little dab of Dijon. Whiskity, whiskity. And then our nice fresh tarragon. A little bit of salt and pepper action. Then stir everybody together. And slide Mr. Chicky back down into the hot tub. <laughs> and there we go, our filling's pretty much done. I'm gonna add another little splash of stock there. Just to let that hang out for a minute. Now we're gonna make our topping. We're gonna take our potatoes drain them off, put them right back into the hot pot. That'll allow the water to evaporate. There we go. And then right down in there, let me grab all the ingredients I need from the fridge. I'm gonna add some soft herb and garlic cheese. <laughs> Fabulous. Little urban garlic cheese down in there, one whole round. It's about five ounces of urban garlic cheese. Oh, what a big fan you are of that. Fabulous. And then we're gonna add in some nice fresh parsley. Make it taste nice and grassy. Lovely herb topping. And then to get the potatoes to brown up really nicely, we're gonna add two egg yolks to our potatoes. And remember we had about two and a half to three pounds of nice starchy 
good old Idaho potatoes. There we go. And then you can add a little bit of milk or stock, whatever you like to help get things going in there. I've got stock up here, so I'm gonna add that. A little salt, a little pepper. Ooh, I forgot, over the shoulder for luck. And now we'll separate our eggs. And I'm just using the yolks, but you can freeze the egg whites and use those for an egg white omelet or any other purpose you deem fit. Just pop them in a plastic food storage bag and throw them right into the freezer. There we go. Let me road map where I'm going here for you guys. And when we come back from break, I'll show you what it looks like when it's all put together. I'm gonna transfer the chicken to a casserole dish. I've got my broiler getting nice and hot. I'm gonna mash up the potatoes and top the chicken and gravy with the potatoes. I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out of the oven when we come back. Ooh. Look at that, huh guys? Isn't that pretty? Mom will love this. This is springtime shepherd's pie. It's a lot lighter than pies that are made with beef or lamb. This one is made with white meat chicken, boneless, skinless chicken. You brown it up lightly, add in about a cup of finely chopped carrots. You can just buy the shredded carrots and run your knife through them. Then once the carrots get nice and tender, we added in a small bunch of scallions finely chopped and a couple of handfuls of peas. We scooted our veggies off to the side and made a light gravy over here on the other side of the pan, stirred in some Dijon mustard and some fresh tarragon. And then on top, we took our potatoes, mashed them up with soft garlic and herb cheese and nice fresh flat leaf parsley. When it comes out of the broiler, oh, look at how brown it got. You know why? Because we put in a couple of egg yolks. When it comes out, just a little sprinkle of paprika. I've got a nice green salad alongside. And I'm gonna show you what this guy looks like when you scoop it up. How good does that look? Gravy and potatoes and chicken.